All right, let's get started. Um, so today we're going to talk about two-day video game uh, with Mac Ruby on the OS X. Uh, but before we get started, I have a few questions for you, just so I can uh, know you better. So I'd like to know who does Ruby for a living. Okay, so who does not do Ruby for a living? All right, so what do you, what do, you do? Python for a living. Good. Um, who does Ruby but not Rails for a living? Uh, so we have a few people. Pretty cool. Um, who does Ruby after work or just for fun? Okay, most people, that's pretty good. Uh, who owns a Mac? Okay, who doesn't own a Mac? Okay, so we have a few people, that's cool. Uh, who knows Coco already and uses it from time to time? All right, not too many. That's actually pretty good because when I started this project, I didn't know much about Coco, so it's pretty good. All right, before we start, I want to test your memory. I want to see what you know about video games. So I'm going to show you some video games, and I want to hear the name of the game, and then we're going to move on really quickly. So this one. Pong, everybody knows it. This one. Asteroid. Asteroid. This one. Asteroid. This one. Maniac Mansion, very good. That's Donkey Kong. This one. Digger. This one. Well, different names, there were a lot of puns, so that's all right. Uh, this is one I played a lot, but I don't know if you guys knew it. So, Alley Cat. So that's, I love this one. Uh, Dark Hands, all right. Burger, easy. All right. Tapper, this one was really good. <laughs> uh, Prince of Persia. Nobody knows this one? Rick Dangerous, I heard it over there. Very good. California Games, very good. This one. I heard it over there, very good. Legend of Kirandia. Very good. So you see the F Zero Double Dragon. All right, so everybody knows this video games. I think we all spend a lot of time playing video games. Video games are fun especially all these, uh, I think we all spend a lot of time playing video games. But we also spend a lot of time uh, writing Ruby, and Ruby is also a lot of fun. And as we saw, most of you guys have a Mac, and the few who did not, well, they might want to uh, consider getting one pretty soon. <laughs> um, anyway, this talk is about video game, and we're talking about old school video games from scratch. We're not talking about using any type of fancy libraries with uh, physics and all the stuff. You can also do that, but um, for this talk, what I wanted to do is spend a couple of hours and just write a simple, co a simple game that's fun to play. So the truth about this talk is that your game, at the end of the day, probably won't be legendary. Um, it won't be a super game that everybody's going to play, and it won't make you really rich like Mr. Burns. The truth is you're just going to be the same geek you've always been and a really nice guy. <laughs> But uh, hopefully, uh, it's going to feed your curiosity. You're going to learn a lot of cool stuff. And you're going to provide hours of fun for other people. So let's quickly look at the very popular games, what, what people are playing nowadays. Um, a lot of people play MMORPGs. So uh, we're talking about games like um, uh, Second Life, uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, EVE Online, a lot of really cool games, but the problem is that it takes too much time to actually code something like that for fun. Uh, you need a team of people working on that. Uh, then you have another type of games, which are the first person shooters, um, games like uh, Half-Life, Halo 3, Far Cry. Uh, these are cool games. You can actually do them pretty easily if you want something very simple. Uh, a good example would be Rubinstein that, were, that was written by the, um, the Fusion guys. Uh, they used a, a library called Gosu, and uh, it, it's, it's cool, but what I wanted to do was actually do something even simpler than that. 
So I looked at different type of games, new stuff that uh, appeared in the last few years. We saw a lot of uh, Wii games, and that's pretty cool because you just interact with the hardware. And now with Mac Ruby, we can actually do that very easily because you just you, you just reuse the device uh, you have on your console or whatever you use and just connect it to the computer. So you have all this cool game we could write. Um, and you also have a lot of online games. Uh, I know my wife plays a lot uh, this kind of game she has on Facebook and you know on different stuff and we have them also on the iPhone and a lot of very tiny games where you find the fun you used to have uh, when you were a kid. You also have the iPhone games. I'm sure uh, a lot of you guys played this game. Um, do you guys know the name of this game? Fly Control. I we spend way too much time playing this game. Um, so other games like Tap Tap, and basically these are very simple games. And what's important is just the idea behind the game. Uh, the way you do the game is not very simple. I, if you look at, at Flight Control, it's actually a very very simple game, but it's an awesome game. Anyways. Uh, what I did was actually, I wrote a code, I wrote a small example, and I want to show you the game before we actually look at how to write the code. So I'm actually going to demo the game. Um, so I'm opening Xcode. I wrote it in Xcode, but um, you don't actually have to. It's just easier. So I'm just going to build the game uh, live for you. Um, all right. So it's it's a very simple game. Um, you can switch full screen, so it will scale up and down. Um, and for that, I just use some vectors. All the design was done by uh, Stephanie. Stephanie, can you can you just stand up? So Stephanie actually helped me. <laughs> so I I just wanted to write this demo for the, the demo was just written for this talk and Stephanie was really nice. She did a lot of design stuff. She even did the music. I think we're gonna hear the music. So anyway, I'm gonna put it full screen and play the game. Uh, the concept of the game is very simple. You, you have to grab the rubies to go to the next level. And you need to avoid the bombs. So I made it really easy for the demo because I'm not that good. Up. So as you can see, we're switching levels, and you can pause the game. Um, so, so and then when you die, I actually give myself a lot of lives. So. There you go. You have a game over. So the, the game is, is very simple. Um, if you look actually at the CPU performance, it's really good. Uh, right now, we're actually using only 3% of my CPU. Um, and when you play, uh, it doesn't go much higher. We're like in the 10, 15 percent. So it's it's very optimized. Um, the screen, yeah, I actually messed up. I see with, with the resolution of the the video projector. But anyway, that's that's the game. It's very simple, and I will show you how uh, it was written. So let me just go back to the presentation. All right. All right, so it was written with Mac Ruby. Uh, Mac Ruby is not Ruby for Scottish people. It was actually written by a Belgium guy. Um, <laughs> so now I have to say, Laurent, can you just stand up so people can actually see you? <laughs> Laurent is over there. It doesn't quite look like that, but I, I never saw him in his postures. Anyway. <laughs> Um, it was written also by a, a lot of other people uh, working for this guy, uh, the man. Uh, that's Apple. And so Apple is actually um, leading the project. MacRuby is an open source project. And it's basically a Ruby implementation on top of the Objective-C runtime and garbage collector. Um, the, major, the, the major advantage for us today, this morning, is that now you don't have a bridge, you can actually access Coco directly. And Coco is um, a suite of frameworks or libraries that you have to write any type of applications. And for this video game, I actually kind of hacked Coco because in Coco, when you want to write video games, you're probably gonna use OpenGL and some really low level uh, C APIs. But in this case, what I did is I used core animation, which is meant for um, desktop application when you do simple animation, when you have like the scroll bar moving or the 
the menu bar moving up and down. And I basically use that to create the game. So um, the way it works is with Snow Leopard, they actually uh, built a core animation on top of OpenGL and they use a GCD, which is uh, the Grand Central Dispatcher. So the way it works is they handle all the threads for you and you have a pool of threads and the, s the system handles all of that. So I did a lot of tests and it turns out that it was fast enough for a simple game like mine and it's much, much easier because we end up doing something like Flash where you have layers and on the layers you just move the layers with the objects. So it's actually much, much easier than having to, d to deal with the sprites and all the stuff. So anyway, let's talk about how you write a video game. Uh, a video game uh, is a bit different than an application. What we have is we have a user, in this case Patrick, and Patrick is going to use his keyboard and it's going to press the buttons, and it's going to send a key event, and the key event is going to get stored in memory. Um, I will explain later on why we do that. Um, so it goes into the memory, which is the game data that would say the user pressed the button. And then we have um, a game loop. So a game loop is something that's going to run, in our case, 30 times a second, and we will do a lot of things. The first thing is it will go and find all the layers that were created previously that are available on um, the game, and we'll tell them to update. And the layer is basically just a core animation layer. It's a very simple layer that doesn't know much about anything apart from its position. So it knows its size and its position. And the layer has a game item. So when you say update, the layer goes and, and talks to the game item, like our user or the other player, and says update. And the player knows about its own position, and it will go and check with the game data if, for instance, uh, in the case of the player, if the user pressed right, uh, the, the game item needs to change its coordinates to move to the right or to the left. Once the, the user change, when the player, uh, the game item, changed its position, what it does is sends, uh, it basically gets read again by the layer, and the layer will reposition itself based on the item. So if you press right, you want in the memory, uh, the layer gets updated, calls the game update, the game item. The game item said, oh, you press the right button, I'm going to move five pixels to the right. And then the layer would say, oh, you move five pixels, so I'm going to move five pixels. And the layer just moves. Uh, once that's done, the game loop comes back and says, okay, let's check on collisions. So on a, on a simple game like I did, it's, it's really easy. You have the player and you will check on collisions between a ruby and the player and a, a bomb and the player. So at this time, the game loop checks on the collisions and if there are any collisions, uh, we're gonna update uh, the amount of lives, the amount of points, and we're gonna eventually play a sound. So um, a game is divided in three parts. So we have the game data, the game loop, and the game play. At least this game is done like that. So the game play. The gameplay is what you use when you play the game, and it's basically the different controls going left and right. The way you're gonna do that in, in Coco with, uh, with MacRuby, or in Coco in general, is in Interface Builder, where you build the, the UI, uh, we add a new view uh, on top in the window. So that's gonna be at the top, so we're gonna be able to catch all the keyboard events. And what we do is we add this view, which is just a drag and drop. I didn't do a video, but it's basically you bring the view uh, in Interface Builder in the window. And then you click on uh, the parameters so you can see what's going on in the inspector. And we say, okay, we actually want a subclass of a normal view so we can interact with it. And we're gonna give it a name called Keyboard Control View. Uh, in reality, what you do is you create the view first, the, you create a class first and then it will show up here in the list of class. But we go back to our code and we create our uh, NSView subclass. So for people who don't know Coco, Coco has a lot of different classes and the NSView is basically what you need to use. I, I'm not gonna explain all the details here, but uh, what we want is to have a subclass of NSView so we can add new methods and uh, NSView has a callback on key down. So what happens is every time people will click on a key, uh, up or down, it will call a method, a method and it will pass event, which is an object. So now we can catch this event and we can do something. And as in, 
usual Ruby, you can call super, which will bring will send back um, the control to the next uh, class in the chain. So what do we do? Is the user press the button, sends the events to the method, and then we deal with it. Now it's actually not that simple because here we just accessing um, the key. But when you play a video game, you need to deal with acceleration. So for instance, if I was a player and you press the button, the game loop comes and it will move me once to the right and then once to the right. So if you leave the button pressed, I'm just going to go move and like that. The problem is in reality, when you play a video game, when you leave the button pressed, the, the, the player will actually accelerate and it will move faster. So you want to actually deal with that. And what we do is uh, we take care of that in the, the game item ac um, you, the game item class. When you press the button and the button was or the button was already pressed, instead of moving the user for like five pixels, we're going to accelerate the movement and push it a bit further. So you need to think. So about uh, basically, you don't want to end up with issues like that, where you didn't scale scale up properly. So when we change resolution. If you have a small window and you just go up, you need to make sure that when before you were saying the player needs to move five pixels to the right, you need to multiply, multiply this dimension by uh, the new screen resolution. So you need to think about the ratio of the screen and all of that. So that's what I did in the cut. It's actually not really hard. You just need to do a bit of math and you're good. But that's, that's basically the gameplay for you. Uh, and then you can bind other uh, keys, for instance, I have pose and X and to space bar and different things that work. So the gameplay is pretty easy. Um, most of the code is actually written in a game loop. Um, so the game loop, if you remember, it's what's running in the background uh, 30 times a second. So the usual workflow that we're used to uh, when, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, the usual workflow when we uh, write uh, web applications or desktop application is that you have uh, an action, you jump on the ball, and you have a reaction. That's, that's the usual thing we're used to. So the user click on the button, and we do something. Now in the video game, it's slightly different. We, we basically don't, the user doesn't need to interact with you. It will just, you have a lot of stuff moving on all, to, all around you, and the game needs to be able to run without the user being involved. So everything needs to run smoothly, regardless of the user's input, or lack thereof. The cat actually goes for the white, so I'm just going to jump. <laughs> All right. So um, the game loop. 30 times per second, the game loop does something. And this is what it does. It will move the player, which is the, the main object. Uh, then it will move the other objects around. And then it will check and resolve all the collisions. It will, it will update all the score and the levels, redraw the graphics, and then play a sound if needed. So that's the job of the, the game loop. And a game loop uh, in Coco, you, could, you can do it different ways. This is the way I did it, which is pretty simple. And uh, this is basically my game loop, or how the game loop gets triggered. Um, all right, so let me explain the code a little bit. So we create, we have an instance of a Coco class called NS timer. So it's just a timer. And then we pass this long method uh, that's that basically says we're going to run on a time interval, and every time we reach this time interval, we're going to do something. And the time interval here is 0 0.03, and then the target is who we're going to call once this interval is, is up. And then we call a selector. So a, a selector in Coco is basically a method you call. Uh, the only thing you need to be careful with when you write uh, Coco uh, with MacRuby is you need to uh, put the colon at the end. So we know it's really a method to call. And uh, then we pass all the stuff that we actually don't care about. Um, so this is just a hash, by the way. Um, don't, don't be scared. It's just a Ruby 1.9 hash. You could do it the, the Ruby 1.8 hash. Uh, but the way it works is in Mac Ruby, uh, when you want to call a selector in Coco, which is a method uh, that takes certain named arguments, uh, you just pass a hash, and it would work. And here I just use the Ruby 1.9 syntax because it looks just much better on screen. So uh, as you can see, the selector refresh screen is the method we're going to call on the target, which is here on the bottom. And uh, this method takes an argument. 
Um, you could also wrap this uh, class into something like that that's much cleaner. Uh, and interval timer would be the class you would write that would just do exactly the same thing and just pass uh, through. Uh, the thing is you only use the timer once, so I didn't think it was very uh, useful to do it. And here is the entire game loop, uh, which is you know quite a lot of code, but it's actually not that hard, so we're going to go through it. Uh, what we do is we ask the game data, data all the layers. So these are all the core animation layers uh, they are just simple layers that know their positions. And then we go through each of them and we say update. Uh, if you remember what I said at the beginning, when the layer updates, what it does, it calls the item itself, and the item goes and uh, move is X and Y, and then based on that, the layer will uh, move. Once that's done, what we do is we check on the collisions. So I have a class, um, I have a method called collisions on game data and it will return two arrays, one for the collided bombs and one for the collided rubies. And to check on the collision, I basically implemented this small method called collide with, um, which I put on the game item itself. And the way it works is instead of doing all the math ourself, uh, ourselves, we're using an S inter intersect rect, which is uh, a C method that we call transparently. So it's really, really fast. And what it does is it takes a rectangle, a rect version of our object, and then it takes another rectangle version of a different uh, object, and it will tell us if there is a collision or not. And um, so what I did, and I'll show you, all the code is open source, and uh, you'll be able to see it, but basically each object has a rect version. So this is the only thing we do to check on collision, and we return true or false. Um, next, we checked if we have uh, collided with any bombs. If we did, we're going to lose a life, which is a method call that would just remove one to the amount of lives. Uh, and if you're at zero, then it's a game over, so we're switching to game over. Then we check on every single collided bomb, and what we do is we take the item and we reset it. And when you reset the item, what that means is we bring it back up at the top of the game, and we're telling it to just start again to fall, to fall down. Oh, very simple. Now, if we did not collide with any bombs, we're going to check if we, had any, uh, if we collided with any rubies. And if we did, uh, we increase the amount of points by the, the value of the item. And uh, we, update the, we update the display. And finally, we bring back the ruby at the top. Uh, and then next, what we do is, if we touch any rubies, we're going to play a sound effect. That's just a tiny sound you were hearing when I was touching a ruby. And I'll show you that in a second. But just before we move to the sound, uh, what we do is, if we should change the level, which is a simple method that checks on the amount of points, um, then I call the method level change, exclamation mark. So playing a sound, uh, it's actually very, very simple. I was almost disappointed. Uh, this is actually all the code I did. You can actually make it even easier than that, but uh, I just wanted to make it a bit fancy. So often when you write a video game, you actually don't need to use object-oriented uh, programming. So in this case, I just created a module with module function, and I have sound effects. And at the beginning of uh, my module, I define different sounds. So you can load different sounds, you can ship with uh, different sounds, uh, or you can use a system sound like I did here. And then I have a method called def frog, and then I pass a delay. So you might want to um, add a delay to the sound, that's why I made it a bit more complicated. So then what we do is we take the sound, and we say perform selector, which is the same as send in Ruby, uh, but in Objective C it's called perform selector. And then we pass it play, uh, we don't pass it any object, but we say after delay, delay. Uh, you could just also do frog.play and it would work, but you would not have the delay. Um, you could also do frog. There's another one that lets you run in a loop, and that's what I use for the music in the background. So the music just loops. So that's actually um, that's it for the sound. So let's look at uh, the game data. So if you remember, the game data is the memory of your uh, game. That's where you store all the different states um, of the game. So again, uh, module game data is just a module function. 
Uh, actually, it's just a, a module that we use uh, not really as a class, so we don't create an instance of, them, of game data. And the challenge is we need to be able to connect uh, the game controller, which is an instance of game controller, uh, with the game data so we can talk with each other. And what we do is we use a hook called uh, awake from nib. So in Coco, uh, when the nib, which is the interface uh, that you created yourself, so you basically drag and drop, that's what we saw at the beginning with NSView, all of these uh, details get loaded, this method gets called. So we call awake from nib. And here what we do is say, okay, we're gonna register ourselves, which is the game controller, with game data, which is just a module. So uh, now game data knows about uh, the controller, and since game, we, we just use game data directly, we don't need to go the other way. Um, once we have this connection made, we can actually go use game data all layers. But I didn't show you how to create a layer yet. So a layer is actually created this way. Um, we call a method called display item, and we pass an item we want to display. And I'm not gonna show you the game, game item, but it's basically an X, Y, and then the image you want to use. All the images that Stephanie designed were just PDF images, so they can scale up and down, uh, and they're just shipped with the game. And we create a new layer, and this new layer is called using image layer, which is a class I created which inherits from core animation. So you just need to do core animation layer, or it's CA layer, and you inherit from that. And then we use, so that's actually a bit weird for Rubies, but that's the way in Objective-C you uh, initiate uh, an instance. You do alloc.init with something. So I need to explain a bit more about that once again. So uh, you could do image.new, but the problem is the way uh, some of the Coco classes work, they actually don't do the proper alloc and init, so you might have some issues. So it's usually better to actually use the Coco syntax and say alloc um, dot init. And here what I wanted to do is to actually initialize with uh, some specific params. And uh, I could just overwrite or just define initialize but because of the issues with the Coco classes, it's better to just stick to the, the Coco approach and say alloc.init with item, which is a method I defined, and then we pass the item. And basically what it does is we get the item, we take the, the file, put it in, and we're good to go. Once the layer is created, we just add it to the array of all the layers, and that's about it. You had a question? Oh, uh, you, you addressed it, actually. Oh, okay. If you have questions, you can just uh, stop me. All right, so uh, then that's actually all the config for the game. So we have another module uh, that defines the data for the game. And this is basically where you have all the stuff for your game. So we have a, a, an array, well, we have a hash with an array uh, of all the levels. And then we define the settings for each level. So this is how I got the game to be much easier for me because I basically gave myself a lot of lives and then I didn't put a lot of bombs. But in this example, you can see uh, we're gonna have three rubies that are gonna be created and fall down and 12 bombs. Uh, we're gonna have a score limit of 30, which means that after 30, we're gonna move on to the next level. Uh, for the vehicle that we use, so you know the little player is on something on some levels, so we just define the name of the file and same thing for the bomb. Uh, and then you have the different ratios that we use so you can have different file size for the player and um, the bomb. Um, so I just want to show you a tiny thing about Cocoa Hacks. So often you might be surprised when you arrive in Cocoa and you're like, this API, just, this API looks weird and you don't like it. Um, so what you need to realize is the Cocoa class is actually a Ruby class. It's exactly the same thing. So you can do what you would do to uh, a Ruby class. So if you don't like an API, what you can do is you can just wrap it. And this is kind of the concept of uh, hot cocoa, which I'm not gonna talk about, but basically you can, you can wrap, you can reopen any cocoa class and do whatever you want with them. So this is a quick example of what I did for NS button. So NS button is, uh, just a simple button that you click on and it does something, so it calls a method. The problem is the NS button is, <sighs> it inherits from a lot of different classes 
and when you want to change just the, the color of the font, you actually need to do all of that. Well, actually, there's an easier way, but for my example, that worked pretty well. So what you need to do is you need to get the attributed title, um, and then you need to get the attributed string, and then you need to modify it, and you need to, res to resend it back to the object. It's kind of a pain, so what I just did is I did that once, and then I just created my method called title color equal and pass a color, and then now I can take my button instance and just call that. So whenever you, you're struggling with ugly code, you can actually refactor that and have a small uh, folder where you just load all these classes that would just wrap stuff for you. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you about writing the game is actually compilation. So we're all used to using Ruby, uh, and it's great. The problem is if you write a, um, a real game and you want to sell it, you probably don't want to ship the source code with your app, uh, especially because people could cheat, people could reuse your code, and different things. So uh, that's one reason why you wouldn't want to use compilation. The other reason is because you want the boot time to be faster. Uh, instead of having to JIT all the files every time you start, what would happen is everything would be done beforehand, so it, the load time would actually be a bit much faster. So the way you do it is actually very simple. You just need to go uh, in your objective, in your Xcode interface, and you say add a new uh, template, a uh, new target, and then you choose embed Mac Ruby. And what it does in the background is actually just that. It's just calling um, a simple script that's called Mac Ruby deploy, and then it passes the the, the target, which is the the target builder, which is where the the application was compiled, was put, and then passes different strings. So here, what I do is I embed Mac Ruby. So basically, the game ships with Mac Ruby, so nobody needs to have Mac Ruby. Uh, and then I say, well, actually, don't load the Ruby standard libraries because we don't need them. So we're gonna make the game a bit uh, smaller, and then compile it. So instead of having uh, all the RB files, we're gonna have some compiled files. So let me just show you what it does. So we should have the same thing now. Very good. So going back to my game. So just since we're looking at it here, it's a bit tiny. I don't know if we can zoom in. Probably not. So if you see, that's the source code of the game. And it's organized by folders. So here we have the different sounds. So we have level one, two, three, four. Uh, then we have all the graphics, uh, which is just different PDFs, files, uh, just the backgrounds and stuff like that. Uh, here is the Coco Hacks I was telling you about, so we're just wrapping. Uh, oh, by the way, if you guys don't like Xcode, you can also just set up to use TextMate uh, when you edit, so here you go. All right. So then we have all the classes, and I was explaining here, we have the control view. Um, that just binds to different code. Um, anyway, th this was his online. I'll just show it to you. And here I define the target. And to define the to add a new target, you just go to what is that? New target here. And you add embed Mac Ruby. So I already did it. We have it here. So let me just show you what we add. So let me build the game a first time. Also, when you do a putz, uh, which I guess now I should try to do G, uh, see if that works. But when you uh, when you play, you can see outputs here on the side, um, so you can kind of debug and see what's what's going on. Oops. All right, so you can actually uh, see in your logs what's going on. So I compiled the game. Uh, well, actually, I did not compile it. I created a .app file, which would be in my projects here. Products. Uh, it's not. Let me see. So we have a build fo folder that should be somewhere here. And I'm in debug mode. So I have my game, and I can just show you the content of the game. So we have a contents folder. Open your source. That's my map. So basically, we're shipping with all the different uh, files. We also have a custom font that we ship. And if you look at the source code, I just show you how you can load the font and ship with your own font. Uh, and then you can see we have these different uh, Ruby files that are just Ruby files that I could open and preview. Uh, and you actually don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is compile all of that running. Uh, 
running the target. So here we're sw switching to using the embed target and we just build and run. Well I could just build it. And it runs the script. Here it says it's building the custom, uh, running the custom shell. So it's taking a little while. And it's taking every single Ruby file and compile it down ahead of time. So once it's done, which hopefully should be soon, All right, there you go. Uh, it's not totally done, but you can see all the RB files were replaced by RBO files. So they're all compiled files, uh, and you just cannot see what's going on in the game, uh, which is cool, especially for the settings. So I only have two minutes. So what I wanted to show you, oh, there you go, the game finished. What I wanted to do is just show you how uh, you add a new level. So to add a new level, here I prepared some, some graphics that Stephanie did for me. Uh, I'm going to go into my graphics here. I'm just going to drag and drop uh, all this stuff here. Up. And I'm not going to copy it. Just put it here. And then I'm, oh, this one I forgot. And then I'm just adding the sound. All right. Now what I do is I just need to go to my um, game config, and I will just add a new, uh, just a new hash for this level, which I actually did somewhere here. There you go. So I'm just going to copy it. Oop. Ah, stupid Xcode. Let's just run the game and see if that works. It should work. Oh, I'm just, I'm in the wrong. So I need to switch back my target to the game so I don't compile it, it will be much faster. And there you go. Oh, it has the. So when you compile it, actually the RBOs files don't get deleted. So I'm just gonna delete them myself so they don't get reloaded. Also, here is the framework, so it ships with MacRuby directly. All right. Uh, Deleting that. All right, and recompiling the game, linking. There you go. Play full screen. All right. Let's try to see the last level. So I need to actually beat all the levels. Level two. All right, I need some motivation, guys. All right, level three. All right, level four, one more to go. All right. Ah, shit. I actually don't remember the limit we put on the level. Shit. All right. Hopefully it's going to it. Ah. All right. I think I'm going to cheat. I'm going to game over. I guess it is too hard or I really suck, one of the two. All right, let me just cheat quickly. <laughs> we're going to hack the game and just say we're going to switch here to... One. That was the problem. <coughs> All right, so let's put this guy at 90. All right, we run the game. All right, full screen. Full start. Yeah, I need to add like left, left, right, right. And All right, level two. Oh shit, man, I suck. <laughs> I just need one ruby. There you go. All right, so I could play for hours, so we probably should stop now. So there was one thing I didn't show you is you can actually use instruments. I'm not going to show it, but you can just use instruments, a lot of the, the Xcode tools to actually monitor and see what's going on with Coco. So anyway, thank you very much.